Okay, so Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade is the third installment in the Indiana Jones franchise that we are looking at in this retrospective series and this first watch for me because I just, I don't know, I just never got around to watching it. So I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on The Last Crusade. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys all think about this movie? Smash it down there, smash that like button, click subscribe. And let's talk about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade right now. Okay, so the third installment in Steven Spielberg's Indiana Jones franchise, The Last Crusade. Now, I really liked Raiders of the Lost Ark. I really did. I thought that was fantastic. I was like, why haven't I been why haven't I seen this movie? Like, what's going on? Then I watched Temple of Doom. I didn't like that as much as Raiders. While I still think Temple Temple of Doom is good and fun, I just, I don't think it was as good as Raiders. Now, when it comes to The Last Crusade, now obviously we have Indy's father coming in and that is played by the late Sean Connery, who is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, he's in my third favorite film of all time, The Rock. So I was excited to see him come and play Indy's father. Now, when it comes to this movie, I'm going to straight out say, this is my favorite one so far. I really like this film a lot. This felt like Steven Spielberg went back to the roots of the original one, went back to that adventure, that action adventure thrill of the first one. Because the second one, to me, felt like it diverged away from the actual adventure side of things, like going and discovering this. We're going on a quest to find this because this is what we do where the second one was more like i'm gonna help these people out i've just been in the wrong place at the wrong time now i've got to kind of help these people to get out of this situation so when it comes to the last crusade what i really like about this movie is the dynamic between harrison ford and sean connery between indy and his father to me that is what made this movie so enjoyable and in order to get you on the same wavelength as they are father and son, you have to nail that chemistry, nail that dynamic between them two to make it so believable that I believe Sean Connery couldn't be Harrison Ford's father. And I thought they nailed that. I thought Steven Spielberg nailed that with the directing. I thought the writing for their characters worked brilliantly. And it dabbled into their backstory, which is what I loved as well. And when they're going back and forth with each other, it really did feel like a father-son relationship. Like You could feel that the affection for each other was there, but you could also feel that tension between them as well, like you, like a father and son would. It, it was just so good. And like the comedic elements in it, in that relationship, just worked on so many levels for me. That, to me, was fantastic. And this movie really set the tone from the first sequence in this movie from when Indy was a kid and he was cat going to get that cross and he's running away from those other people there and it's his awesome chase sequence on a train going through now we see why he doesn't like snakes and it it was just absolutely brilliant and we see how he gets the hat and why he always has the hat and that was our real first taste of Indiana Jones's backstory and the relationship that he might have with his father because his father does make a little appearance here and this is where it all ties in because the last crusade is all about the father's actual goals and ambition to find this holy grail to find the cup that jesus drank out of in the last supper and where his blood when he was on the when he was being crucified the blood went into it so it's supposed to give you internal life and it's like basically like the fountain of youth sort of thing so his father has been obsessed with that the, his whole entire life. And now all of a sudden, his father's gone missing, looking for it. Indy now has to come in and take over where he left off to find him. And it's just, it's so much fun, man. It really is. This movie is so much fun. I can't believe, man, I had the biggest smile on my face. The action sequences were absolutely fantastic. I really loved it. It was a good mixture of like the old 80s classic action, but mixed in with a bit more of a, like a modern take as well. Obviously, being the third one, you know, you're starting to 
adapt and learn and get new technology. So you start to add new elements in that. And the chase sequences here were absolutely incredible. The tank and the horse sequence. That was so fun. I really liked that. I was just like, yes, shot beautifully. It really was shot beautifully. You could see everything going on and it just felt authentic as well. Now, obviously, again, the time period that this was made, the visual effects aren't going to be the best. There are so many moments here where you can clearly see it's green screen, but you have to take that when you're watching these older movies. You've got to understand that when you watch these type of movies that were made back then, the visual effects aren't the same as they are in today's world. Like We're not going to get Avatar Way of Water level of CGI that we get in those movies in this type of movie it just they just didn't have the technology there so again i'm not going to comment on the visual effects here because of the time period and i wasn't personally born and like alive watching these in cinema at that time so you know back then it's probably like watching this like oh my god that's absolutely insane like this is just a masterpiece of technology like how can we get any better than this and then obviously technology develops and stuff like that so I'm not going to comment on the visual effects. Now, some of the supporting cast here as well, I did mind. I, I'm glad that we went back because from what I've heard, from what people have told me, Temple of Doom is actually a prequel to Raiders of the Lost Ark. So I didn't know that. I had no idea about that. So I'm glad now we've got the Nazis back as the villains. So, I mean, what? <laughs> it just sounds so weird saying that. I'm glad that the Nazis are back. Like, that just sounds weird. Obviously... I don't, like, that could be taken out of context so badly. Obviously, I don't want them back, period, in today's world. But as the villains of this movie, I thought they did, they were fantastic as the villains. I just felt like the Temple of Dune's villains just felt one-dimensional. Like, these villains here, they feel like they have a purpose for this, and there's a reason why they want it. And it's not just, like, it's, there's two type of villains in this movie. There's, like, the Nazis, obviously. They want this to take over the world and stuff like that. We see Hitler in this movie as well, which I thought was funny. That scene was funny as, as he, Indy walks up to him. He's got the the um, the um notebook of his father there and Hitler opens it and you're thinking, oh my God, he's going to throw it into the fire here and it's just going to just derail everything. Nope, Hitler signs it and gives it back to him. And I thought that was just absolutely hilarious. Like funny ads. I don't know why. It just was funny. But so you have that whole side with the Nazis. And then you have this other guy who actually hired Indy's dad and Indy, and he is actually, ends up being the main villain. He's the one that wants this cup for himself. He wants eternal life himself. So he's hired these guys to find it, and in order to get there, he's then used the Nazis as well as like sort of like a mil military backing to be able to get a hold of this. So I like that aspect, having the two two different villains there added a bit more dynamic to it and was kind of like oh okay so what happens if he gets it is he going to turn on the nazis or the nazis are going to turn on him what's going to happen there so you have these continued dynamics going on so that was really really cool the female in here as well the lead she was she's uh, it's a weird one because I didn't like the love interest in the last one. I just didn't feel like that felt authentic. The first one in Raiders, I really did like that love dynamic. I felt like they had history. Here, this, I get what they were doing with it and it worked because she's making Indy fall for her, but also she's a double agent because she's working with the Nazis. But then obviously she comes around because she has her own motivations as well and she obviously starts to get turned when things start to go wrong and she sees that Indy and the father dynamic and like how much they love each other and you know just the general family side of stuff that actually turns her and then when you finally see that precious cup there and the the chance of eternal life and she's willing to just give up everything to get that cup and I thought look her character was well written for me it worked I have no problems with that. That dynamic worked as well. So overall, I really enjoyed this. I thought the adventure sequences were absolutely fantastic. It really did. It really did feel like an adventure movie. It really did. And now I can see why there's other movies like this that are being made now, stuff like that, 
where they take their inspiration from. It's it, it really is. Indiana Jones is really this brilliant adventure, action adventure franchise that has influenced a lot of things moving forward. I thought John Williams' score, I mean, it's John Williams. He's, he's a goat. He's the goat of scores. And he just, it's just absolutely brilliant. And now that Indiana Jones theme is just, oh, man, it's so good, isn't it? It's just so good. So overall, The Last Crusade, I absolutely loved this movie. I really did. This is definitely my favorite one. Man, I, I can't wait to watch this again. I want to watch it again. And now it's got me even more excited to see the next one. I know some people say not to watch the next one. The next one's not part of Indiana Jones and stuff like that. They say it's awful. Hopefully it's not. I really hope I like it. But... And now I'm even more excited for the new one coming in theaters, Dial of Destiny. I cannot wait for that now because this, this, I don't know how I haven't seen these. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity to see it for the very first time. Because when you see movies like this for the very first time, it's like a unique experience. And I feel like seeing it now, I actually feel like seeing it now actually helps me to comprehend what's going on and like appreciate it more. When you're a kid, it's kind of like, it's a different sort of feeling. But like here, just the appreciation that goes into making this sort of film, like the appreciation of just the uh, the actual story, the characters and that, I just feel like I get more out of it now. So I'm glad I finally got the chance to see it. So let me know what you guys think of The Last Crusade. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down in that comment section below. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.